Hi everyone, I left a question at the end of last video. When we have disturbance in our input or output, a constant duty is not enough. This is a topology of our bug, and this is our PWM generator. In practical circuit, it's a microcontroller. In real circuit, between the switch, MOSFET or IGBT, we have a driver. If you don't know what is driver, I made a video about driver before, you can have a look. This is the open loop bug converter we had before. If we want the current and voltage stay at a certain value, we can measure them and do comparison with a reference value and put the error into something. We want this something to do some calculation and tell our PWM generator to generate a proper duty ratio value to adjust the current or voltage value from the duty. We call this something a compensator and this whole part is controller. However, when I learned control before, I never saw this type of diagram in my control class. All I know is something looks like this. So it took me so long time to learn to view the controller on a converter. As I said before, I will help all of you be a better engineer than me. So I will tell you what I learned from the hard way in a very, very easy way. Well, you want to know what I see? I see pride. I see power. I see a badass mother who don't take no crap of nobody. Excuse me? Let's look this block diagram. The controller is obviously the same controller we are having here. And this plot is a transfer function of our converter. I first want to controller design and transfer function identify in this same video. And after three days torture myself, I just gave up. That's too much for one video. Let's first figure out the plant and leave the controller in next video. To find the converter plant or the transfer function, we need to do dynamic analysis to the converter. The dynamic analysis is also called as AC modeling, average info modeling. Some books call the small signal analysis. So all these names are saying I mean doing the same thing to the converter which is identify the transfer function of the converter circuit. We know from last video the converter have transfer state and steady state. Even in the transient state we have ripples on a big wave. The dynamic analysis is to find a model that can reflect the small ripple on the dominant behavior of the converter, aka to find the middle line here. The transfer function is derived from the averaging model. It depends on the controlled input and output we choose. The input is usually duty and the output can be output voltage and inductor current or any other variable you want to control. The dynamic analysis is not only used to calculate transfer function, it can also analyze the transient overshoot, settling time, and other system dynamic behavior. There are many ways to do the AC modeling. The results are equivalent. I like to use state space averaging approach. I like this method is because it's easy to understand from the converter topology. The hard part might be heavy calculation, but we have MATLAB, so don't worry, all the MATLAB file in this video can be found in info box. The state equation of a system can be written in the compact matrix form looks like this. This xt is a state vector, most of the time we put inductor current and capacitor voltage in here. In today's bar converter case, we put IL and V out in. The UT is the input vector, contain the input, which is a control variable D. YT is the output vector, we can place any signal in this vector. It's the linear combination of XT and UT, we will explain later on how to use this. 
So how to form this ABCD matrix? Let's back to our last video. We have on and off period. And we can write the on and off behavior to our inductor and capacitor. To combine the on and off period, we times D on the on state and 1 minus D on the off state. Then we got the differential equation that can describe the bar converter looks like this. After simplifying the equation, we can get two differential equations like this. We can then put them in a matrix format like this. Now we have half of our state space equation we know the A and B matrix. The YT equation depends on what control output we want. Let's first say we want to use the duty to control the voltage. Then we write our YT equation looks like this. And after we do Laplace transform, the transfer function of V out and D looks like this. Don't worry, the detailed calculation process will explain later in MATLAB. If we want to know the duty and inductor current transfer function, we can do this. And the ILD transfer function looks like this. Now we finish the dynamic analysis of bar converter. Before we move to MATLAB, this state averaging analysis I provide here is very rough and remains on problems. In bar converter, we luckily only have this small signal times with, um, times with a constant and easy to put this thing into our matrix format. However, in other converter, we will have two small signal values tied together or no small signal value. Let's put these questions to future Julie. Hope she can update new videos quick. Wait, what? What? Okay, let's move into MATLAB. In this Spark Dynamic Analysis file, we put the state space model looks like this and solve this state space using equation C times the um, inverse of the I S minus A matrix and times B plus D to solve this state space transfer function. And let's run this script. We got the transfer function looks like this. Okay, the last thing is all I said sounds very true, but what if I'm wrong? Everyone can make mistakes. How to verify the transfer function I teach you are right. We can use MATLAB model linearize app to estimate the frequency response of our Simulink bug converter model and compare the body plot with our dynamic analysis model. I have to see that I've already installed all the apps I need to use in the following video. However, you may met error when you uh, follow my video. You can post your error in the comments. And if I saw that, I will let you know how to install the add-ons. Okay, to open the model linearizer in the Simulink model window, click this apps gallery and you can find this model linearizer tab click it and we use this estimation tab to obtain the body plot we need to fill these two things to start the estimation so first let's choose uh, analyze io which means the input and output of our model um, so to choose this we first need to identify the signals here so for our current um, bug converter we want the duty as our input so click on the signal and click this linearization choose open loop input and it will have this little um, sign here uh, indicate this is our open loop input and we want choose 
B measurement as our output output uh, as our open loop output. So again, click this signal and choose open loop output. And let's go back to our model linearizer uh, estimation and we choose this model IOs. So it means we use the uh, input and output we just um, choose in our model. Then let's specify the input signal. Um, frequency response estimation injects an input signal into the input analysis point. In our bulk converter, we give a seam stream signal, which is a series of sinusoid perturbations at a range of frequencies. So we click the seam stream and by add an input signal, we click this thing and in this dialog box, we need to specify the frequency range and numbers of points for the input signal. How to choose the range? Let's have a look of our dynamic analysis. So in our dynamic analysis, um, if we are having a bug converter looks like this and our transfer function looks like this, then let's have a look of the body plot. The body plot looks like this. The change happened in this range. So we know that in this dialog, we want e to the power of 3 to e to the power of 6 and let's have 60 frequencies. So now the MATLAB will pick 60 points on the range we specified and give a sine wave to the input point. Um, let's define the amplitude of the signal. So first of all, select or the signal. It shows blue like this. It means you select all of the signals. And we usually use 10% of the input value as our input signal amplitude. Our input here is a duty at 0.5. Thus, we put 0.05 as the amplitude. And we click OK. And then we click body. Then we will get the body plot estimate from the open loop we built last time. To plot this estimation system at the analysis system together, we first drag this asthesis1 to workspace. And now we can see our S system show in workspace. So let's go back. Then we can run this grid. Let's uncomment this two line and run this grid. Oh, uh, sorry, this is asthesis1. Um, let's run this grid. And we will have two body plot, plot together. And we can see that the estimated system from the simulation is same as our dynamic analysis system. That uh, verified our dynamic analysis is true. So, okay, in this video, we learned to do the dynamic analysis to bar converter. Thank you for your watching. We will see you in next video.